Hi. Good morning. We are live with live you guys. Good Saturday. morning or maybe good afternoon maybe if you're good watching afternoon. this a little yeah. bit later. Yeah, we're, depending on where you are in the world. I know. We shouldn't assume so. it's morning everywhere, right? <laughs> it's morning here. It's, here, hey. it's early here. Yeah. yeah. So how are you guys doing? Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hey. Happy hey. Saturday. Maybe yeah. that's a better way to start the Happy show. Happy Saturday. Um, Sean and Allison McManus here with you um, from, from Spoken, Spoken Garden. Garden. Yep. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, we want to help you become hey. a better gardener. If you've never been here before, we talk about a lot of different garden topics today. We're going to dive into Ooh. different ways to make more plants. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. And I know um, I know I'm really excited to hear more about this and hear from you guys and some of your ideas as well. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, this topic was actually picked by one of our viewers, one hey. of our audience members, Graham Thomas. Now, we haven't been able to get a hold of you, Graham yet but we're doing our best to uh, get a hold of you if you're watch if you do watch this video go ahead and email us at sean and allison at spoken garden and uh, at spokengarden.com and we will uh, we can start a conversation because this is your topic you get to pick one of these awesome prizes back here to uh, for us to send you because we picked your topic so yeah. uh oh and you guys let us know we're having some delays here on our oh. end so we're gonna see what we need to fix really quick um, does the sound okay, uh, sound okay? Please let us know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Looks like we're a little bit delayed here. Oh, okay. Well, let me, so we will fix this for you guys. Here, so. so you guys, um, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of prizes behind us to um, talk to Graham about. So like Sean said, if you're here, Graham, let us know. Yeah. We also need to get in touch with T. Wynn from Ooh. last week, yeah. um, last week's winner. And I think we had told you guys in advance, but sorry if we didn't, we weren't able to, but we had to pre-record that live last week. Yeah. Well, it wasn't live, right, at that point. But um, we had a conference, so we were um, connected with a bunch of our um, our mm -hmm. garden communicators, as we call ourselves, a lot of authors and podcasters and video people mm -hmm. and editors and a whole oh, yeah. bunch of really, really awesome, cool yeah. people. Everybody that, that produces some type of content for gardening is part of this organization called GardenCom. And you know, you're, if you're interested, you can always go to GardenCom, that's garden and then C-O-M-M dot O-R-G, and you can find out more about it. It's a great organization. We love it. We've, I know, we've actually, we have so much fun with all the people, all the different members there. And uh, it's, it's brought a lot of different opportunities our way. So yeah, it definitely yep. has. Yep. So, so yes, we were, um, yeah, we were gone at that last week, but here we are. Um, it is so fun to see all of you guys chiming in in the chat right now. Ah, I totally. mean, there are so many of you. I it know. feels, we sat down and we said, you know, it feels like we're connecting with old friends. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. really fun. Yeah. We saw Mark. Good morning, yeah, Mark. Mark. I know Mark. Yep. We're so glad yeah, you're we, back We missed with you, us. man. We missed you. I know. And Everybody then, gets so busy yeah. in the summer, right? It's just. Kim's here and uh, yeah um, let's see real yeah. jingy real good jingy. morning cheers hey, real morning, jingy Kim. morning real jingy um Kim Matlock like you said um Andrea B good morning, morning good morning Andrea. Rhonda Testa hey morning Rhonda who is next week's yep. winner yep you won so yeah so um let's see we've got Supwant gardening lover from India hey good morning how Supwant. are you I, yeah. I almost said good morning but I know it's, it's not morning it's, maybe it's evening there let Gosh. us know let us know what time of yeah, uh, what day time it is, is there, there? it's probably Saturday here it's probably Sunday, early Sunday morning there, maybe? maybe 14 hours ahead, something 14, like that. 14, 17, something like that. Um, let's see, yeah. Sharon LaFay is here, and Sherry oh, Osborne, morning, Sherry. yay! Morning, Sharon. There's so many of you probably here that haven't, um, or maybe haven't chimed in on the chat yet, so let us know if you're here, and yeah, we're really totally. excited. Totally, you guys. Yeah, and also, let us know about the, um, about what's going on for the, um, for the video and the audio, it looks like on our end it might be a little choppy. I know, we're and so, so sorry, you guys. We're not sure what's going on, but um, so let us know. Thought we thought we got past this. I know, me too. I know, right? Um, we have a poll um, in the works right now. If you mm -hmm. look, it should be maybe at the top of your screen. And we just wanted to kickstart this um, today's topic off with: Do you plan to propagate new plants this fall? Yep. And it's fun to see kind of where everyone's at. It's kind of like a Man, mix between see. yes and not sure. And then a few of you are saying, no, probably not. It's really cool, you guys. So we love hearing back from you. And um, yeah, thank you for responding on that and letting mm -hmm. us know. Totally, yeah, we're interested. You know, this is why this is why we're doing this stuff. So yeah, yeah we'll, we'll leave this open for um, a little bit longer and kind of just see what everybody else is saying. Mm -hmm. totally. So, okay, let's yeah, see guys. why we're... So yeah, again, we're, we're dealing with a, little, a few things going on here. It might be a little choppy, so... Um, we're hoping everything's okay. Just let us know if you guys can uh, can see us. Uh, if it's uh, if it's good video, good audio. Um, not sure what's going on here. So, 
Oh, the joys of technology. I know. So. So we're hearing that the audio is great, but the video is choppy. So ah, thank you, Jennifer, for letting us know. Okay. We're going to see what we can do on thank our you, end. Thank you, Jennifer. To, to fix that. Yeah. Oh, let's bummer. see what's going on here. Yeah, Kim says the same thing. The stream's really bad. So thank you guys. Oh, Darn that's it. so frustrating. It is. So, so we're gonna before we even dive into the topic, we're gonna kind of fix this. So um, yeah, take the poll if you haven't yet. Maybe um, and maybe in the chat, can you guys let us know what you plan to propagate? Mm -hmm. Like what um, what's your what kind of idea right now? Yeah, what are you interested in? And while you're doing that, we'll um, we'll see what we can do here to fix this. Yeah. So yeah, do you plan? We're going to talk about a lot of different ways to propagate, so we'll get into that. But it's fun to hear, you know, kind of what your ideas are. Mm -hmm. It really is. So, yeah, let's see. Oh, audio's low. Okay. Sherry, we are going to fix that. That's an easy fix. Or so we think. So we might need to turn it up on your end. We're going to try oh, not to yeah. start a whole new stream. I know. So we, we hate doing that. We hate yeah. doing that for you. So you on the mics... Yeah, let's turn those up there a little bit. There we go. How's hopefully, that, you guys? Hopefully that's a little bit better. Gosh, fine tuning. So Rhonda's on the saying fly. the video is starting to look a little bit better. So yeah, you know, it's so funny, you guys. We do the same thing every week, and sometimes it works just awesome. And sometimes, like a couple times, you guys have experienced with us. We had to completely shut down the program yeah, and start over. Too many. That's happened too many times. I know. You know. And yeah, and it's basically my laptop, and I apologize, guys. <laughs> <laughs> my laptop just sometimes just can't handle the pressure. No, it's too much pressure. It's too much, man. So, so again, while we're fixing things on our end, uh, let us know in the chat what you plan on propagating. Are you going to take cuttings? Actually, have you guys taken cuttings? Um, we would love to hear that too. A couple weeks ago, we did a summer cuttings episode, and we wanted to hear. Oh, Rhonda said no. Video's not so good now. Well, okay, we are almost there, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we all kind of talked about uh, cuttings and different things we wanted to take. Um, have you guys taken cuttings and how do they look at this mm -hmm. point? Yep, how are they doing? Did you take any uh, beginning of the summer or oh, middle right. of the summer cuttings? And because we've got some updates to show you on the cuttings we took back on July 24th, something yeah, like that. Yeah, July 24th. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys, thank you for your patience here. We're, um, we're almost, I think we're almost figuring this out here. Yeah, this is crazy. Have you guys Maybe. ever opened up Chrome and tried to and, and see that there's like 17 or 11 different tabs open? It's like, no, that's not what's going on. So. Okay, it's getting better. Okay. So. I think we're almost there, you guys. I think that did the trick. I didn't even do anything. So everybody, okay, sorry. I know we're like <laughs> spacing out looking at our laptops for ah! a second. Ah! Okay, I think we might be back on track here. So um, okay. just looking at what I can see it from my end. So you guys, um, yeah, so we have a fun show today. I know, um, I think we explained some of it already, so we'll just kind of move on. So let's see, we've got a couple comments here. Sharon said, I have new, um, oh, a new Pieris I put in this year and I'd like to propagate that. Oh, that sounds awesome. Awesome, that's great. No cuttings yet, she said. Andrea says, I'm propagating petunia cuttings, angelonia, ooh, a ooh, Mexican nice. hat. Ooh, nice. how are they going? Have you seen roots developing yet? Are you sure, are you waiting on anything yet? So we have a couple yeah. that we haven't um, haven't seen the roots yet, so it's taking a little bit longer, but yeah. it's only been one so month. Should we should we show should we show the updates on the um, stuff we're talking about? I know we are talking about it. <clears throat> or, Video no. looks good now. Okay, thank yes. you, Andrea. Yay, Woo! we fixed it. Okay. Google, it was Google's fault. Google okay. Chrome. Google Chrome. Um, yeah, well, I think maybe we'll get to that when we get okay. into our topic. What do okay. you think? Okay, sure. That sounds good. I know we're so excited. Well, we have well so many... before we talk about the topic, right? Because we yeah. should show the yeah, update. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. Okay, so, I'm just okay. happy that we're back. Um, Sharon we're back. says I, she would like to propagate fuchsias, petunias, and calabrocoa. Oh my gosh. Perfect timing. Oh my Sharon. gosh. End of summer, best timing ever yep. to do that. And so we actually have videos on that. We actually have videos. What's going on? Oh, Sorry, we're guys. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, never mind. Keep, Sorry. Keep, keep ah, rolling. Something happened on her screen. <laughs> it's like, we're all what? Good. Ah! Okay, so uh, perfect time to take cuttings of fuchsia and petunias end of summer, right? Yeah. And we made this videos awesome. already about that. And so um, go uh, make sure to go to our channel and look for, I think we have a plant propagation playlist. Mm -hmm. We definitely do. Look there and you'll find petunias and you'll find fuchsias. We haven't done Calabrocoa yet, but that yeah. is on our list too, Sharon. That is That's, coming. Yeah, 
it's, it's coming up. That's coming very soon. <laughs> and I think we so, just, yeah. we, we're kind of debating if we want to do a video on that or not yet. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll think about that. Yeah. But if there's anything we can help you with, maybe today's show or um, another time, just let us know. Yeah, please let us know. Totally. Okay, let's dive into questions now that we're back Diving and we're like ready to go. Okay. So here we go. We have a question from probably, you guys, one of our very first videos, which we kind of cringe when we watch it because it's just like, oh. But it's one of our most viewed videos, It's one too. of our top viewed videos. We've got and a lot of questions and comments it's on It's such it too, an so interesting it's experience been, yeah. because we really want to just pull that video and like redo it because our audio was awful and we didn't know what we were doing. So, but it's removing old mulch. So before adding new mulch. Yes. So we do have an update to that video coming this <coughs> So me. Jessica Vandergore Sorry, Van de Gorber. Um, does mulch need to have a lining under it? Um, we have a bed with hedge bushes and other plants, and there is a random lining. There's a random lining with thin a thin layer of mulch. She says, "I don't want to spray, so what should I do?" And, and just so you know, too, yeah, Jessica's comment. We truncated it because there was a little bit more there, but just to get a little, a little bit more succinct and get the main points out, that's why. It read the way it's read. So, it's so. A, can you? Okay, so it's a thin layer of like a lining with a little thin layer of mulch on top of it. That's what. That's the what it sounds is. like. And, okay. and from and from her comment too, it sounds like the lining isn't consistently all the way through the whole bed. Okay. It's like spotty because they just bought this house, and this is some of the stuff. Okay. We didn't write down. I didn't write down for the question. They just bought a house. Um, it's a new bed. They've got shrubs in it, and it's got lining in different places, but it's old lining, and so. She's got some lining in some places that's exposed, and then she's got very thin mulch. So, great question, Jessica. Thank you for asking that. Um, yeah, definitely. It happens a lot to a lot of people, and even people that have done already done this in their beds, and they come back years later because you know once once you get it done, you think, no, I'm done for you know for a couple of years or so, and then a couple of years go by, and then this situation can happen. So, uh, Jessica, uh, what I would say is is um, so make sure so 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 for the lining it depends on you if you have a really bad uh, it depends on your bed and the different weeds in your area and how how much they grow how fast they grow how invasive they are if you have a bed that's full, already full of weeds and it's continuously had the weeds go to seed uh, flower and then drop the seed down you're going to have what's called a seed bed in that bed and that means that those seeds year after year after year how many years that's happened those seeds have actually gone to flower they've gone to seed they've dropped the seed pretty much in that same bed you know gravity drops the seeds to the ground and so they're laying there they're going to be in that soil ready to germinate under the, the best conditions when those conditions happen and so um, some of those seeds can stay viable for seven years 10 years 20 years some even for over 50 years depending on which weed it is um, so if you think, if this fits your situation or anybody else out there, this fits your situation, definitely, if you've had that weed seed, those weeds in there for a long time, they've gone to seed in that, go ahead, rip all the weeds out, definitely relayer it, put down that yeah. lining, whether it's a landscape fabric and, um, the water can move through it or it's black plastic. We would, I wouldn't recommend that. We wouldn't recommend that because it is plastic, but it is, it, it can be used as a weed barrier. So because you want to use those fabrics that lining because you want to squelch the weeds you want to make sure that they don't have the perfect environment to actually germinate pop through and take over and you got to do more work and get them out of there so that that layer will stop them partially from doing that and um, it helps promote the plants already on top that have already started growing and you want to keep so that's one that's one way to look at it too if you don't have all the weeds in there and you know you ha don't have a big weed or, or a seed bed from all those weeds then maybe you don't need a lining and some people prefer not to because mm, excuse me because what happens is is um, either a mower goes by or you're weeding um, and you pop through or the mower goes by and it grabs that that lining mm -hmm. it can rip it out and it makes a big mess and it's hard sometimes it wraps up in the mower so you don't want to go through all that and the other thing is, is if you have that lining down you want to add more plants now you got to punch through that lining and maybe it might take a special tool to do that something else that you might not normally use so you got to go find that it's kind of, it kind of gets to be more of a production than it needs to be sounds like it i mean so so it kind of depends on your situation so uh, but yeah so those are two situations where you might or might not need the lining for the layer of mulch itself whether you have a liner down or not 
we would recommend at least two inches, two inches thick of any type of mulch material that you're gonna put down. Go up to four inches yeah, too. Was... Four inches is better because it blocks more light um, and it actually insulates the soil below it. So if there's any seed in that soil below it, it won't reach a great temperature, the best or optimum temperature to actually, um, to actually uh, germinate. So that's good. And if they do germinate, it'll take them a lot longer and more energy to get up through that two to four inches of soil and hopefully they won't survive that part of it and then you don't have to deal with the weeds. So, so yeah, I mean, that's a, there's a lot to it, right? I mean, oh, that's yeah. a really good question because oh, like, yeah. do you even want the thin layer there? I mean, I would almost just say carefully just get it out and then you don't mm -hmm. ever have to deal with it. But if you want to mm -hmm. use it, you know, like you said, just mm -hmm. be careful, kind of get out the old if you can, lay a new whatever down. Yep, and so guys too, um, uh, this is a pro tip. If you are going to, I've done this so many times in my past lives and jobs. If you're gonna mulch in the summertime, before you lay down the mulch and even the liner down, water the heck out of that bed because once you put those that liner down and that layer of mulch down, it not only insulates it the way it is, um, uh, it, it not only is a good insulator, but it also can be an actual extra layer for moisture to get through and you will maintain the condition of the soil at its current state of moisture retention that it's already in. Once you lay that down, it will perpetuate that even if you water over the top. It'll perpetuate that longer even if you water over the top of the mulch. So the pro tip is, is to water before you lay down the layer. Water that bed before you lay down that layer or put down that thick layer of mulch because otherwise it's gonna be harder to get that water down to the plant roots later. Okay, that's good. So, wow, I mean, obviously we could we can talk a lot longer about mulching, right? <laughs> it just yeah. made me think fall mulching tips may be coming up soon. Like oh, that yeah. might be That'd something be that, you yeah. know, I've, I've, it just made me wonder how many of you out there are thinking about adding mulch this uh, winter, mm -hmm. or this fall in advance of winter mm -hmm. and what kind of mulch you use. So that yeah. might be fun to cover one yeah. coming we, up We soon. prefer arborist mulch, just saying. Uh, everybody kind of has their their take on that. Yeah, right, because so. a lot of people are allergic to the arborist mulch. There's, you know, different things that can kind of like, you know, different spores and stuff that can kind of um, yep. get airborne when you're moving it. I know I've had that problem before. Yeah, this past year we both have yeah. had that problem where in the past I've never had that problem. Isn't that but weird? now, yeah, you know, we're getting a little older, allergy change, you know, whatever. I know, so. it's like lately we've been needing, needing to wear masks um, when we're yeah. spreading the mulch. So I know. one more reason, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, good, good to thing wear we have masks. <laughs> oh. Anyway, okay, so you guys, um, hopefully that was helpful, mm. Jessica, about removing old mulch remo yeah. uh, regarding the liner. So let's yeah. move on. Okay, on. so we have a lot of questions lately. We've we've been kind of obsessed with our zinnias in our garden, and which I'm sure a lot of you <laughs> We're are. Never, too. We've never been obsessed. We with love them zinnias. I know which plant aren't we obsessed about actually? <laughs> but zinnias, we've made what three zinnia videos I think in the last in the last week. Yes. About a week. So we did, um, yeah, we did a Zinnia plant chat, which we got a whole bunch of amazing questions from you guys. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of like specific care things that people were asking about that we didn't plan on covering in that video. Yep. So we made a second video. Yep, part two. And that was just the most recent one, I think, that we yep, filmed. it was. We yep. also did a short on deadheading. So yep. here, we here we go. Stella asks, um, if I want... Then this is from... Oh, sorry. Th this question is from the part two, the second Zinnia care video. Okay. So Stella asks, if I want to get zinnias to be closely grown like yours, like ours, I guess, um, can I just scatter a lot of seeds into my bed at once? It's a good question. It, you know, st thank you, Stella, for asking this. You can. Um, uh, that, that would be a direct sowing. And so you need to wait to do that pretty much until the temperatures outside have gone past or are above consistently above the... Um, any frost happening, any cold temperatures, and the soil would need to be heated up at least probably to about 60 degrees. So um, so it makes it a little hard to do that. What we did, and the reason it looks the way it does, is because we actually started our seeds early. We started them in seed trays, and then we kind of doubled up on a, you know, in each cell, you know, we have, here's, here's an example. We, we do seed, we do uh, seeds in cells, and we got, this is a six cell, so we do two seeds, two seeds, two seeds, you know, like that. And what um, what happens is we get two plants coming up and then we thin them, but we would take them and grow them in these cell packs in seed starting or potting soil, whatever we have available. And then once they're grown up, that we got those first true leaves popped up, we would go transplant them out 
to that bed and we space them very close, but they are already germinated. And doing it this way, we actually, um, it will actually save seed. We, it's almost, if, if you do it just like a direct sow, like you're talking about, just spread them out like that, you could end up wasting some of your seed. Um, and so I, I'd hate to have you do that. This way it's a little bit more controlled there's just um, there's a little bit more order to it, and then you have the specific plants to go plant out there. I think we planted them maybe on not even six inch centers. I mean, they are tight. Mm -hmm. They are super tight, and that's why it looks the way it does. That was our process to get it there. If you, if it's easier for you to go out and just broadcast them and spread them out, just put them out there. Go for it. I know. Give it a try. Yeah, give I it mean, a try. we're all about you know, as yeah. most of you know, to just experiment and give it a try. A yep. try. Mm -hmm. And totally. did you mention about cut flowers, like um, mm -hmm. nope. planting them a lot closer together? This is what a lot of the flower farmers do. Mm -hmm. um, they plant them tighter, so they have to stretch, right? Mm -hmm. So you get that longer stem. And that's really, that's, that's one of the reasons. Fun. That's one of the reasons we planted them as close as we did. That we just wanted them to just, we, we wanted more in there. We wanted I know. more flowers. Well, so. really, yeah, that's, I know. There's, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of reasons. So, but yeah. So when you plant them that close or you broadcast a seed like that and you just leave them in there, to grow like that, they are going to grow taller than what the packet says because they are competing with light for light. So that is going to happen. That's one of the things that does happen when they're tighter together. Oh, that makes sense. But that also means that also means you're going to need to water them more, and you're probably going to need to fertilize them a little bit more than you planned on because they're so tightly packed. The resources in that bed are going to be used up faster. So just food for thought. Yeah, good call. So yeah. Anyway. Good call. Hope okay, that so your question. yeah, I know. Thank you for asking that, Stella. That was a really good question. And another question popped up in the chat. Mm. Um, uh, Sharon asked, um, "Have we filmed a video on saving seeds from zinnias?" And great question. We did film that last year. We did a harvesting zinnia seeds right at the yep, yep. end of summer. Yep, yep. So I linked that for Sharon. And if any of you want to see that, we will link that in our um, our show description. Yeah, I think we did a I think we did a regular video on that, like a recorded one that we released, and I think then we did also a live uh, saving seeds. Oh, and I think we did do that. Zinnias yeah. might have been a part of that too. I know we're starting to think back, you guys. We're reflecting a little bit because it's almost been a whole year since we've had this live show. Anniversary's coming up. Uh, our anniversary's coming up, so we'll talk more about that a little bit later. We're starting to kind of think of some ideas and planning <laughs> out. But thank you, Sharon, for asking that. Um, hopefully that that helps you. Yes. And um, hopefully it does. And our anniversary coming up. If you guys have any ideas about topics for our anniversary, or your anniversary doing lives, let us know. Oh, I know we're not doing a contest right now, but, no, but it's always not. fun to hear but from just, you guys. Yeah, but just yeah, no contest uh, with this. Just you know, if any ideas you have, we'd love to know. I know, and you know what, Kim Matlock, I want to call you out and say thank you. Mm -hmm. Sent us an, a wonderful email earlier yeah. this week, which I'm so sorry we haven't responded to yet. We no. we've been thinking about you and wanting yeah. to get back to you. Thank you, Kim. You had some amazing ideas, um, and she said she was um, kind of sad she got really busy and didn't get a chance to get her topics in for our contest this month. Yeah. But um, we might use some of your topics for upcoming videos because we, yeah. we liked your ideas. So totally. wanted really to let really you know ideas. that we did get that, and thank you. Yep, yep. So, okay. So we got some stuff going on in the chat. What's we got going some on in the chat? In. Uh, What's real jingies. Um, just hey. positive as always. Just greeting everybody. We love that. Totally. Um, he also mentioned, real jingie said he wants to, um, what do you say? Something about his spider plants. Oh, you got cool. Spider plants are so cool. He wants to um, oh, man. spend more time getting his little spider plantlets to grow in the vine and get larger before he tries to propagate. Mm -hmm. that's and that's one of, that's thinking. one of our examples of propagation today. Oh yeah, it, it is. is. It's okay. similar to one of the ones we have here. Cool. To use as an example, spider plants are right up there with it. So neat. Okay. Yeah. So and cool. a lot of just hello in general to all the all of you that have, are popping into the, yeah. the chat. Thanks for being us. here, everybody. I know we're this is awesome. We're sorry that if you came in late and you saw some streaming problems at the beginning. Yeah. Sorry about sorry that. Sorry about that. My computer. So now we know. Yeah. Okay. So I need a new computer. Next question. <laughs> Sorry, I still, I still have a hearing problem right now. Okay, I'm going to blame it on that anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so Neri Ailman. Um, I'm not sure if um, Neri's here this morning, but um, yeah. Neri usually is here with us and mm -hmm. asks awesome questions. Um, this is also on the Zinnia Plant Care Part 2. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you cut... Oh, she asked about gladiolus, though. Okay, mm -hmm. how do you cut gladiolus, she wants to know. And once they flower, do you cut the rest of the leaves? Great questions. Yeah. So and you how know do what? you cut them? And, and I'm pretty sure Neri asked this question for the gladiolus because 
in this part two of uh, zinnia plant care, we talked about cutting zinnia flowers for cut flowers and then also deadheading. We went over both of those and fertilizing too. But um, it's, it's great that this question popped up That's because fun. of that video for gladiolus. So, um, so grab this? yeah, sure. We have so, a prop. so how to cut gladiolus. Basically okay. what you do is, yep. oh yeah, a little drippy. cool. Gotcha. Might be a spider in there. Somewhere. So okay. this is gladiolus from our garden, from oh, our front so yard. Pretty. Beautiful, it. right? So gladiolus are one of those flowers. They have a very long spiky flower with these trumpet flowers coming off a main spike or so stem. Beautiful. And what happens is, is they start opening down below. So you can see there's flowers on the bottom of the stem, lower part of the stem, and then the top part of the stem. They start flowering and opening up down here. And then over time it progresses. Over time, it, the progression of flowering starts to go up the stem and they open over time, going up, going up, going up. And you can see up here, we've got one almost oh, about yeah. to open up here and then there's one on its way. So this is, that's how they, that's how they flower. Now, Neri, for your question, um, <clears throat> how to cut them. You basically, the time to cut them is when you have this full stem, you got all these buds on here and this first flower down here is starting to open up that's when either starting to open up or it's fully open, that's when you cut this flower. That's when you go and harvest the gladiolus flower. And so what you wanna to do to harvest it is you wanna make sure that you have a stem length. So from, from the base of the last flower down to the end, you wanna have at least 12 inches, up to 18 inches or whatever vase height. If you have a vase that's bigger than 18 inches, it's taller than 18 inches, then try and find that stem length on your gladiolus. Some gladiolus are gonna have it, some aren't, depending on how well they grew, available light, water, fertilizer, all that stuff. So, but um, on this one, we actually we actually cut this down um, to this length. There were actually leaves, some leaves on this, and we cut those here and here. So what you do is you come down the stem, if you can, find that length of 12 to 18 inches, but also cut and leave the gladiolus plant itself leave at least three to four leaves coming up above the ground. And then anything after those three to four leaves coming up off the ground, cut it. And there's gladiolus flower. Now that's what we did um, for this. And it turned out really well. It's beautiful, oh, right? So really gorgeous. Yeah. So what you can do too, so that's that's how to take the cut flower. For, right? Yeah, I was going to say, like, we weren't sure, right? Oh, we were sure. We were sure about that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, we were sure. Um, so what you want to do, so you got your cut flower, try and get it in water as soon as you can. Either you have mm. a bucket of water there with you as you cut it or uh, cut it and then get in the house, have your vase ready, fill with water and plop it in. So that's how you do that. So when, uh, I think the second part of her question, I'm going to put this back. The second part of Neri's question was then what happens with the leaves? And once, once they flower, do you cut the rest of the leaves? No, the leaves on the plant, in the ground, leave those leaves, let them continue to be green, let them continue to grow and photosynthesize. Yeah. Because what you wanna do is, you've, you've taken the flower away, it's, so basically you're forcing the plant to be done with its reproductive cycle. Now the plant has to still photosynthesize and it has to draw that energy down into the, uh, the bulb, the corm, and so it can survive this next winter to then have all the energy to pop back out, out of the ground and produce more of these beautiful flowers. So leave the green on the plant, on the gladiolus plant, until that withers and dies and turns brown, down to the ground. Then cut the stem um, with the leaves on it, cut all that away, and you're good to go. That's, I like, it. see, that's kind of what I was getting at. I was wondering, was she asking about cut flowers or like deadheading? But I like that you covered both, because that way. Well, I was just talking about the cut flower. Right. Uh, the, the deadheading, um, yeah, if, if so, okay, so if you leave the flower on the plant and let it go through its reproductive cycle and because um, you want to collect the seeds and try the seeds, Ooh. that's cool. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um, so just wait for those flowers to wither. Glad you brought that up. Um, it's worth a shot. Uh, let the flowers wither. Let them, um, let them mature. Let them turn brown. Um, let them dry out and then go in and collect the seed from them. Um, and see if you can produce them. I know. So, but it leave, you know, that's that's if you leave the flower on the plant and let that happen. Once you do that and you collect the seeds, you can cut the flower off. But um, if the leaves are still green when you cut that flower off, leave those green leaves. 
for the reasons I just stated before. Yeah, that's awesome. Because yep. I know we were talking, we were like, you know what, there's a lot of experimenting we're going to do this this mm -hmm. late summer. We want to collect seeds from gladiola, <laughs> gladiolus. We're going to collect some seeds from dahlias. Mm -hmm. um, we want to just try out some things that we haven't um, experimented with. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So hopefully, Nero, we, we covered all your questions and then some. Hope that helped. I know. That's, yeah. Yay. <coughs> so that is it Excuse for me. questions. We kept it short because we've got a lot of really um, fun stuff to get into. We've got a lot of information coming your way. Lots. So before we move on, um, thank you again, <laughs> those of you that are joining in. And we want to let you know that um, the poll's still live. And awesome. we've got a lot of great votes. The question again was, do you plan to propagate new plants this fall? And it looks like 47% of you said yes. Awesome, you guys. So that is that's, so cool. Yeah. And 32% said they're not sure yet. So okay. maybe they're kind of like on the fence a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and then 21, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. 21% said no. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's really interesting. It's really cool that 47% of you said yes. I know. It's really, you know. And you know what? Sorry. Good. Well, I was just going to say, you know, some people just get kind of burnt out by the end of the season. Oh, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It's easy to do if you got a, a decent sized garden and it needs a lot of care and you got to be out there all the time. It's, it's really easy to do that. So also the not sure yet, um, it, that's, that can be, you know, a lot of people can be not sure for a lot of different yeah. reasons too. Maybe they don't have time. Maybe they've never done it before and they're really apprehensive to try it. Um, there's a lot of different reasons. So, but that's cool. Thank you, everybody, for taking that poll. I know. And you know what? We just ended the poll. Okay. And we're, I have a new poll, I think, that we're going to throw new up there. Poll. So and check for this. Um, go ahead. Uh, oh. If you wouldn't mind moving on, I'll get I'm, this I'm ready. moving on. OK. Because i got to um. think of how I want to word it. OK. <laughs> I know. OK. Uh, one so, of those mornings. OK. OK, guys. So um, propagation. Ooh. Um, oh, so we have we have our propagation poll oh, okay, that yeah, we yeah. actually different poll than this morning's poll. We actually put a poll out last this past Thursday, as a post to everybody out there that wanted to that wanted to be a part of it. Um, I think at this point we had 26 people. That's awesome. Um, yeah, super cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna close the camera out. Here we go. So what we have here is on Thursday, um, we put a poll out that said Happy Thursday, everyone. A quick poll: How many? of you have started taking stem cuttings this summer. It's cut off there, but it's, that's what it is. So 26 votes at the time of this. Um, so you can see 50% I've taken stem cuttings, really cool. And then 15% of you said, excuse me, I have not taken any stem cuttings yet. And then 31% of you at this poll, 26 uh, votes said, I want to, but I'm not sure how. And then there was about 7%, I believe, of uh, people in this poll that said, um, they're kind of scared to. They really, they're not, they're not comfortable doing that. So this was really cool that, that was uh, everybody great. that participated in this poll because um, we really wanted to know if anybody started any stem cuttings this summer. I know. So. It's fun to hear. And a lot of you chimed in on the chat. So it's awesome to hear <clears throat> what you're mm -hmm. taking stem cuttings of and what you're planning on taking stem cu cuttings of. Totally. Totally. So yeah. So thanks you guys for any of you that took this poll. Thank you so much. We're kind of so, pole crazy right now. Yeah, a little bit, maybe. <laughs> it's maybe. just fun to get your feedback, and it's a quick way of just hearing from everybody and giving you a voice. Yeah. So we have a new poll up. Okay. Oh, Would you no. consider yourself a bit burnt out on gardening at this point in the season? Ah, that's a good question. It's kind of fun yeah. to hear. And right now we're 17% yes and 83% no. So yay. Good. A lot good. of you are hanging in there. and Well, and you're, you're hopefully you're balancing your, your garden with all the other stuff going on mm -hmm. in life, right? I mean, gosh, it's so crazy right now. I so, know everybody's so busy. Yeah. And, yeah. So it's fun to hear from you because sometimes Sean and I go through that and we're kind of like, yeah, we do. gosh, you know, we just don't want to go water right now. Or, or we're just tired. We're just tired. We're exhausted. So, but we push yeah. through and we feel better when we get outside, right? Yes, we do. It's always we that. We totally feel better when we get outside. Yep. Get that fresh air. Yeah. Get out of the house just and all the, all the TVs and the radios and all that stuff. Get out of the office. Put the phone down. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So hard. I know it's hard because so. then I want to use my phone to take pictures around the garden. So <laughs> that's tough. But okay, so we should move on. Moving on, moving along. How's everything in the chat? Um, really Sorry, good. Yeah, everybody's okay. kind of. We've had about awesome. eight people vote so far, so that's fun to hear. Thanks, guys. So we're gonna make some new plants, or we're gonna talk about it. At talk least, about right? making new plants again, Graham Thomas. Thank you so much for this topic. I know this is gonna be a fun one, and there's. Maybe some of you haven't realized before, there are so many ways to make new plants. There's not, mm -hmm. it's not just taking cuttings nope. or maybe growing from seed. If you haven't nope. thought of that, that's actually propagation. And growing by seed is a way to propagate yeah. plants. So it makes our list today. 
So yeah. So yeah. so okay. So we're gonna kind of talk about an introduction, right? Introduction. Kind of introduction into I don't know, propagation. How's that gonna work? And then we want to relate it to fall a little bit and talk about. Um, yeah, just what you can do now. Just how is it relevant coming into fall season for most of us? What are some things that we can do now? Sorry, guys, getting this down. There's a lot of screens. There we are. There, there we, we are. are. Hey, okay, we're just smaller. We're miniature. Okay, so how to make new plants. This is so cool because there's so many different ways, and we're going to show you a list of that and when to oh, yeah. do it um, with some examples in a minute. So, right now, uh, just propagation plants, propagating plants. Um, it's creating new plants from existing plants, right? And actually, if you think about it, you're creating new plants from existing plants when you're collecting their seed and planting their seed or you're buying seed of uh, current plants, existing plants to then plant and propagate new plants by seeds. So, you know, it's just fun. And there's a couple different reasons. There's probably a lot of different reasons why you'd want to propagate plants and make new plants from the plants you have. Yeah, so I'll go over some of those. So, um, I mean, straight up saving money. I mean, you have beautiful plants around your yard and oh, you want more of them, or everything. you want to ensure that you can have those plants for next year yep. and you don't have to go rebuy them. So saving oh. money is a big reason why a Things lot of us propagate. so expensive right now. They can now. be really oh expensive. I know. Oh seeds gosh. aren't as much, yeah. but why not collect the seeds from things you have now? Well, and it kind of depends too on the plant, like, like petunia yeah, or... Uh, what are those um, those little guys? Um, the caliber coas. Oh, the caliber coas too. They can get expensive. Um, impatience. Oh, impatience seeds can be we very want expensive. Seeds. Geranium seeds can be expensive. Anyways. Yeah, so, that's a yeah, really good idea. Just goes on and on. So, so other reasons to pr propagate plants are is just a straight up experiment. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. Yep, Mark. We're we're gonna encourage everybody to experiment and earn their lab earn their coats. Lab coats. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I know. Um, you maybe you want to uh, simply just fill open spaces in your yard with things that you already grow. Like we, that's kind of one of our big reasons as well as um, like lavender, for example. Mm -hmm. We've propagated a lot of lavender over the years, and we have filled in lots of spaces. Well, yeah, and then what what pushed us to do that actually is one of our one of our projects that we haven't had a chance to start yet because there's got so many other things going on. But it's a curbside. Uh, curb appeal oh, uh, yes. in the front yard. We want more lavender plants, but it's like, gosh, we have to go buy more plants. They're like, they're like twelve to twenty bucks each for the ones we want, and they're just English lavender. But still, that's expensive when you gotta buy eight to ten of them. Yeah. And then all the other plants go along with it. So if you propagate them, what pushed us to propagate these is that project. So, I know, and it's fun because we yeah. already love the lavender we have. So why mm -hmm. not just make more? And they yep. they really do propagate very well. Yeah. Totally. So we've already planted some of our cuttings um, from last season, and they are thriving mm -hmm. They're doing in the really ground. Well. They're doing really well. So it's yep. fun to, it, I guess another reason on the list could have been just the satisfaction of knowing that you made something and that, you know, it's just mm -hmm. kind of continuing on with your experiment and something works and then you just feel really good about it. Yep. And then you can always look back and look in your yard years later and say, I made that plant. I know. It's that, fun to. That plant I took cuttings of. It is. It's really fun. Yep. So, okay, so moving, or uh, another reason could be just to be a straight up plant nerd. So that kind of, you know, fits our, we're plant nerds. that fits us. We are, yeah, so. totally. Okay. So when can you propagate plants? So it's fun to think about because with all the different ways to propagate plants, you can propagate plants almost any time of the year, depending on where you live, you know, the plant you're talking about, and um, what type of uh, growing what, what type of propagation you want to do in the facilities you might need to you do that, whether it's a heating pad, a greenhouse, a dark room. I mean, you know, uh, if, you're, if you have an open bench in your garage, I mean, it just kind of depends the space you have available and how much time you want to put into it. So it, it's really cool. There's so many different ways. We're going to tell you in a minute all the different ways to propagate plants. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So right now we've, we're starting to think of, maybe you guys are too, we're starting to think of fall. You know, fall's coming up. We've already passed the halfway mark of summer. So, you know, uh, what are the different ways to actually propagate plants coming up this fall? And we've listed them here and it's pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of us are sowing seeds, right? Fall seed sowing. And there's different ways. You can do them um, inside mm -hmm. or outside. So you can direct sow or indirect sow. Yep, yep, yep. So there's lots of so, options there for that. Yep. And then also, of course, there's taking cuttings. Yep. You know, uh, fall fall cuttings, uh, we've already, we, we talked about it earlier here, petunias, fuchsias. Um, what is the other ones there? There's We've the, got some uh, examples. Oh, we do have examples yeah. later. Okay, so I won't go over those now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, dividing plants in the fall, that's kind of an ongoing thing every fall, every year. So that's pretty cool. I know, that's really, I know we're going to talk more about that. And then performing tissue cultures. I mean, talk about feeling like a plant nerd. This is a super science 
oh, yeah. type of activity that you could maybe try. So. And yet another thing you probably want to wear a mask for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's funny. Okay. So, all right. Moving along. Next so I think what we'll do is go over this list. This is something that you may or may not want to take a screenshot of because there's a lot of information and I'm sorry, we're sorry that this is so info heavy, but this is kind of, we wanted to show you all of this mm -hmm. and then we're going to kind of break it down and talk about some of these individually. Yeah, we got some stuff we're going to demo here and show you right now that you can do right now. So that's yeah, cool. yeah. So yeah. So of course, um, there's the stem cuttings. Now, we did, we actually took stem cuttings for, uh, for middle of the summer, and we did that to coleus, we did it to uh, English lavender, and we did it for African daisies. And we have those up here as oh, examples for I'm you to, show, to show you, because uh, pretty much um, the, what we did water cuttings and we did uh, soil cuttings of, of all three of those plants. And all the water cuttings really rooted um, they, they did well, except the African daisies. They haven't actually rooted yet. Now, for African daisies, um, our, our research showed before we actually did this, because we hadn't done it before, so it's, it's kind of an experiment for us. It showed three to four weeks for rooting to happen in water. So um, we're at the four-week uh, moment here. We're at that four-week time. And so we actually have those, and they're all doing pretty good. One of them, so whenever you do any, no, um, oh, that's lavender. Um, whenever yeah. you do any uh, any cuttings, you're going to have attrition. And so, sorry, we need to make it full screen so we can see. What's full screen? Sorry. The picture. Well, well, we're. Oh, okay. We're doing Never mind. Sorry. Oh, I My see. Bad. Never mind. Never mind. Here, let's do that. I'm going to do that. There we go. Okay. There we go. Good call. Now cool. we can see. Now we can see. Ha <laughs> ha. Not miniature. So here we go. Here's our um, African daisy cuttings. One did actually wither and die, even in the water, about oh, no. a week after we took the cuttings. So it's going to happen. Sometimes it's the tissue that you take, and you just don't know if it's actually going to make it through the process or not. Um, it could have been a really hot day in one of, in that first week, and we just it just didn't make it. So, um, but these two, we have these. They're still green. They're still alive. They're still photosynthesizing, but no roots yet. So. Um, Still oh, kind of waiting. Yeah, we're no. we're on the edge, the very end of that of that four weeks. So hopefully we'll see those soon. I really hope that one roots too. It's a beautiful African daisy. It's kind of a some of you have seen it if you've you know been on our lives for a while mm -hmm. with us. Um, it's kind of a kind of a burgundy color almost. Like mm -hmm. a it's beautiful. Beautiful. So I don't know. Oh yeah, you guys can see that there. So if I hold that up, you can see the roots in there. Oh, that's so fun. Yep, you can see those roots. Isn't that cool, you guys? Three new lavender plants. Yep. Yep, three new brand new lavender plants all doing really well. So actually we're at the point where the roots are, you'd say about two inches almost, so we can mm -hmm. transplant these into soil. Yep, the general, very soon. totally, right? yeah, good point. Yeah, um, the rule of thumb is is any uh, water cuttings that you have that, since they rooted, uh, measure about a, about an inch and a half to two inches out on uh, most most of the roots that it has, or even just, if it just has one root, go to two inches in length, and that's a good uh, measure to then know that you need to transplant it into soil to get it to start growing larger and to really uh, get it healthy. That's so. so fun. I guess it looks like, I didn't realize there is one that hasn't rooted oh, so yeah. far yet. Yep, it's kind of, That's and close. again, and again, it's uh, it's part of that attrition. It's still, yeah. it's still kind of green down here. It's not doing so well up top, but mm. it's just, it, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see. And then we've got the coleus here. Let me do that oh, there. There we coleus. go, oh my, oh my gosh, look now, at all those roots. Look at all those roots, you guys, Can isn't you guys that cool? See that? Wow. It's just a massive, I mean, yeah. we really need to get these transplanted. Yeah. And so these actually rooted within, it's supposed to be, I think, one to two weeks or one to three weeks. Yeah, it's fast. Or two to, two to three weeks. I think it's two to three weeks. At two weeks, these are already started rooting. They root so easy. And with all of these water cuttings, no root hormone was mixed in here. It's just straight up water. And we just kept the water clean. About every two days, we change out the water. That's super fun. So, I'm so glad. Yeah. And we haven't checked the... Um, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The uh, the ones that we actually rooted in the soil, we're hoping they rooted. We haven't well, looked at those yet. Yep. Yeah. So we got so we have one of those here. here. So again, so and these are midsummer cuttings. You could probably take them right now if you wanted to, um, and they'd probably do fine. Actually, coleus um, in our in our research books um, in the literature it says you can pretty much take these any time of year because they root so easily. And I'm tugging on this right now, and it's not coming out. It is solid in that soil. Yay. So we have. And all the rest of them, we have two more of these. They're solid in the soil too. So we've got six brand new coleus plants. I'm so excited. So 
um, and, and take a time out from showing you guys this. The reason, the, the way you can handle these is um, take the cuttings in the summer or in the fall with the idea that you're gonna keep them covered, you're gonna keep them protected over the winter and then check them to make sure they have enough of a root system, they've got enough top growth in the next spring to then plant out at the appropriate time after frost has passed. Yeah. So that's that's what happens with these. You can try and plant them out if you have a really mild climate um, in the fall if they've already rooted, but going through a winter cycle and it, it, it kind of gets to be, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a roulette situa a situation. You don't want to chance it um, dying over the winter. So overwinter them in a protected area. I know, and I, I have to admit, I'm a little worried about the that process because <clears throat> we had kind of a hiccup with cold, really cold temperatures that kind of zapped a whole bunch of our cuttings last year, and then we had an aphid infestation yeah. in our greenhouse. Yeah, the so combination was not good. Was we, not we lost all of our hydrangea cuttings. Hydrangeas, I think, wasn't it petunias? petunias. We, we had some beautiful petunias. We They all rooted, or most of them did, and then we lost them all. So it's just, you put all that time in, mm, it's kind of heartbreaking, but... We've got a heating mat now we didn't have then. So. Yep, 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 so it's that all helped. good. So anyway, so uh, just to show yeah. you guys too, uh, lavender, doing really good, Ooh, tugging really on cool. it, it's awesome in the soil. And then we've got this African daisy here. It's It's got some roots because it's tugging a little bit and it's, it's moving some of the soil. So yeah, the other ones I tried today, they did, they hadn't really rooted yet. They were just coming in and out real easy. So. They hadn't really so anyway, okay. so that's the update on those. Overall, everything's looking really well. We're happy with it. We have a question um, about about this process. So cool. um, Sharon's wondering, once they root in water, so talking about our water cuttings, mm -hmm. is it best to plant them up in a pot first before putting them directly in the ground? Yes, yes, because what's going on is, is they've, it's a great question. Thank a you really for asking. Really good question. It. You, you want to give them a chance to kind of get a new baseline, but kind of get them steady growing in soil first. Um, so, so they can just get used to that medium. They've been growing. I mean, if, if you started them in, in water like we have, that's what they know right now. That's how they've grown so far. So getting them in a pot to stabilize that growth and get them used to that structure to take up uh, water and nutrients in that way, in that medium is a really good idea. If you think they're like super robust and they have huge root systems, and you know you have a good soil outside and you want to go that direction, it's up to you. You can you can do that. But if it was me, I would rather pot them up mm -hmm. and get them healthy on in growing in that medium first in some type of soil before placing them out into the garden. Yeah, that's what we usually prefer. Plus, yeah. it might not be the right time to plant some of those things in the ground. And then yes. you're going to risk, you know, that winter kind of that cold those yep. cold temperatures could really harm them, especially like, when they're that small. Totally, yeah, right? and yeah, totally. Great point because if we took our coleus cuttings, and e even in the soil, and we planted them outside right now, they're going to last maybe about another month, maybe a month and a half until our first frost comes, and then they're done. Yeah, and mm -hmm. these we want to have for next year, um, next spring to really start and have them for all spring, as most most of the spring as much as we can into the summer and then beyond. So we're going to overwinter these in these pots. Mm -hmm. Um, or we might have to pot them up into larger pots, but we're going to overwinter them in the greenhouse because, um, yeah, we don't want to lose them over the winter months. And I mean, so. side note on that, I'm also kind of, I don't, I don't know if I ran this by you yet, but I'm also planning and hoping that we can um, pull up the coleus that these came from. We have three of them planted oh, yeah. in our yard. I kind of want to pull those up mm -hmm. and overwinter them mm -hmm. and just see what happens. Totally, yeah. So, That's a great they're idea, just, yeah. I love them. And yeah. more of these around the yard, I think, would be awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, why not? Yeah. Give it a try. Sure. So thank you, Sharon. That was an awesome question. Um, okay, anything else about cuttings? Um, well, yeah. Here, I mean, we can uh, always talk more about cuttings. Right? So taking cuttings um, any time of year, mm -hmm. what you want to do is, we, we've got up here, we've got it in the fall. You can take cuttings in the fall. And here's our plant examples. There's a lot more There's of them. Lot. So, But yeah, we got fuchsias, uh, pelargoniums, geraniums, like the zonals or the ivies, uh, petunias, calabrocoa, hydrangea, coleus, um, Autumn Joy Sedums, mm. yeah, that's really cool. Autumn Joy Sedums, you can take cuttings of those almost any time that's of such, year. That's so cool. They're, they're like the coleus. They just root real easily um, as long as they're actively growing and they're not like slowing down or they have any type of um, stress. Take cuttings of them. You got it. it it'll, be, it'll be a new plant. It's almost guaranteed. Um, so 
Now, when you're taking any stem cuttings though, most of the time what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that it's on non-flowering tissue, so there's no flower on that tissue of that stem that you're taking the cutting of. And that is because the plant has on that tissue, it's kind of switched over, it's like a light switch. When it goes into reproductive mode, that light switch is turned on for reproduction mm -hmm. and its ability um, at that point to generate new roots as a cutting after it's been clicked over to regeneration or to, to reproductive mode is really, really hard for it to actually generate roots. It just, it's, it's really hard for it to do that. So that's why a lot of literature, a lot of people out there say, take a cutting, a stem cutting without any flower on it. Um, so yeah, so anyway, yeah. so that comes into it. And also you wanna take um, uh, the, the active growth, the newest growth, the most vigorous growth of that plant because that's gonna increase the ability of that plant and your success rate of getting those roots. So the older the tissue, the slower the rooting is to happen, if it'll happen at all. Yeah, so, that's a really good point. So yeah, so and actually to taking the stem cuttings, um, depending on, it, it depends on the plant and the time of year. Some plants are great for fall, like these plants we have up here that we've listed here. Some aren't. It's better to do it in the early spring or sometime in summer. So just kind of get to know your plant a little bit yeah. and do, do your research. That's, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah. We have another really good question in the chat <clears throat> here from Jennifer. Jennifer asks, um, when do you start fertilizing cuttings and would you reduce the strength of the mix like you do with seedlings? Good question. Yeah. Um, once you start having those roots, um, you have a, a substantial root system, and I say substantial, you have at least one to two roots that are an oh, inch and a half to two inches in length. That's not only when you can transplant them, but that's also to soil if they're in water, but that's a good time to actually start fertilizing them. Now, if they're in soil, it's gonna be hard to know how long those roots are unless you pop it out and you gingerly, very delicately, take the soil away yeah. from those roots to find that length. That can be damaging to the plant. It can be stressful to the plant, so probably wouldn't recommend that. But um, what you would do if you're gonna fertilize, yeah. Uh, lessen the strength of it, definitely. I would use pretty much a liquid fertilizer over a, um, over a yeah. uh, what is it? A, like a colored fertilizer, yeah, yeah, granulated. Because a granulated, you can't control the concentration of that fertilizer once it's activated and gets down the roots. You could end up, the plants are so tender with those new roots, it could burn them. So using mm -hmm. a diluted uh, liquid solution is a great way to go. So maybe yeah. maybe do 50% to, to take that further. Maybe use about 50% of the actual solution, what they recommend for any plants. Only use that though if they don't call out on the label um, for seedlings or for uh, cuttings. Because some labels will call that yeah, out. Yeah, like our Fox Farm fertilizer says mm -hmm. they have specific, does, you know, like um, <clears throat> ingredient or uh, mm -hmm. directions, I guess, for different stages of plant growth. Mm -hmm. And seedlings actually is on there, so I was mm -hmm. surprised. Yep. Yeah, they so yeah, so any any fertilizer you use, follow the uh, label. So, yeah. Yep. Okay. So cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, awesome question. So great questions, you guys. So um, we're going to move on to planting seeds, which mm. is the next way, and a lot of us are most familiar planting probably with this seeds. indoor seed sowing <clears throat> or direct seed sowing. There are mm -hmm. some things you can sow in the fall, um, if especially if you're in warmer climates, like what probably zones eight, nine, and above. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are some great um, milder climates. You might be able to get away with it in zone seven, depending on the plant itself. Yeah, um, that's true. If it's if it's zoned for that, like I think coneflowers, coneflowers are either zone three or four yeah, up really... to eight or nine, something like that, maybe even to eleven. So if the plant itself is zoned, here's here's a good way, a good rule of thumb. It's not going to be this through for all plants in all zones, but where you live. But if if the plant is zoned to survive, it's hardy in your zone, then there's a really good chance that the seeds are too. And so what that means is, is the seeds, if you sow seeds in the fall, direct sow them out in your garden, um, they if the, if the plant is zoned for hardiness in your zone, those seeds will also survive the winter. And so that's how you can basically, in a general sense, know if you can fall seed sow, direct sow out in your garden. So some, not all plants are the same, so it might be different for certain plants, but. Um, in general, that's a good way to go. And we didn't come up with a huge <coughs> list of plants. We have talked a lot about seeds already um, in previous lives. So, mm -hmm. but direct sowing, um, cone flowers, blanket flowers, poppies, things mm -hmm. that you want to bloom in the spring and kind of mm -hmm. want to get them 
Oh, yeah. Kind of going. That's one yeah. option for you. Yeah, and you know what? Something that that's not on this list that we've seen in our garden are daisies. We've oh. got we've got English daisies and we've got sh a certain Lots of Shasta, Shasta daisies, daisies yeah. out in our backyard. We sowed them from seed. Um, they grew up. We've got a whole patch now. It just keeps growing it keeps exponentially, growing. No, it really and does. it just keeps reseeding itself every year. And so we keep getting more and more. And so that is fun. So yeah. yeah. So that might be something you might want to consider too. Yeah. So. So anyway, that is yeah. That's an option. <clears throat> mm -hmm. A lot of us are sowing different food crops right now. Colder, cooler kind of mm -hmm. food crops. Oh yeah. Lettuce oh. and you know different oh, yeah. uh, brassicas and, and, and things and, like and that. And what did we bring in here? What is? Um. I can't remember what I grabbed. So, oh, salpiglosis. Oh, that's a good one. To we have say. a lot of those that popped so, up. So here, I'm gonna and then nasturtiums. We have. Um, we uh, some of you might have seen. We did a video not too long ago where here we did a bunch of fall seed sowing. Yep. So we got a lot of seedlings, and we're kind. Of, a lot of these are ready to mm -hmm. to transplant now. Mm -hmm. They've got their first true leaves already grown. Oh, so fun. yep, they're ready to transplant out, and uh, we'll get those done hopefully soon. I know these haven't popped up yet. We had to so or, uh, soak these after we already had planted. So mm -hmm. we've got our first one right there. Oh, that came up fast. I know, it really did. Yeah, cool. So that's fun. We Actually, where Sean and I are at this point, we need to get some of our uh, food crops kind of. Mm -hmm. We need to clear out some beds and clean up some things and yep. get those going. Yep. We just haven't got to that yet. Yep. It's on the list. It's on the list, yeah. So, okay. okay. So next up, tissue culture. Now, if you're not familiar with tissue culture, this is really fun. You can actually, a lot of people think, if you're familiar with it, you know, uh, tissue culture, it happens under lab conditions. You have this, you have this actual workspace where there's a hood and there's, there's plexiglass and you're like, you have a Tyvek suit on, you're wearing plastic gloves and a mask <laughs> and your head's covered. And so, and you go into this, like this metal clean area it's like a clean room and the hood actually sucks the air up and away from where you're working so nothing gets contaminated and you're literally taking those conditions are kind of extreme but that's how the large uh, tissue culture and plant companies do it when they want to do this but tissue culture basically is propagating plants by taking little pieces of tissue from plants and that can be leaf pieces it can be buds that's so cool it can be stems yeah it can be roots um, and there's, and there's all different ways and all different protocols to do that. But literally, you take a piece, like a section, maybe an inch or maybe a half inch uh, section of a stem, let's say, with a butt on it, and you stick it in this Petri dish uh, with a certain medium, what they call auger. It's a nutrient solution. You stick it on there, and it's got uh, growth hormone, plant growth hormone mixed in with it, and it stimulates this little piece to regrow a whole new plant. And sometimes, depending on you know, the type of plant, the, the plant itself, and then if you use a leaf, sometimes you can get multiple little plantlets growing off a little piece of a leaf in that Petri dish, and it's so cool. The, the key to tissue culture, though, is to make sure that it's constantly clean all the time, because if any type of bacteria or fungus or anything gets on that auger because you breathed on it or something in the air because something wasn't exactly clean, clean when you were using it, like a knife, you know, a little mm. exacto knife or part of the Petri dish or something got mixed in with the auger, that fungus or that bacteria will literally grow in that auger and overtake and kill your tissue culture, your tissue that you're trying to grow the new plant on. So it's usually tissue culture is definitely under clean room conditions. Everything's sterile. So, but it's, it's kind super of, cool. It's kind of hard to think how would you, you know, just in your normal house. Um, I know you said there are kits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's kits on you Amazon. You can buy kits on Amazon. And from other companies too that you can check out if you just do like a big Google search. And we're such science so. nerds, like we haven't tried this at our own house yet. So I'm yeah. like, I think, I think that'd be kind of fun. It'd be, it would be fun. It would, yeah. What kind of plants can, I mean, you, we said any, pretty much like, <coughs> a lot me. of different types of plants, but we didn't give you any specific ones. Can you think of any off the um, top of your head? Yeah, petunias, geraniums. Oh, that'd uh, be fun. I mean, and not, not only like the annuals, you know, like zinnias and uh, cosmos. I mean, you can do almost any plant, but there's also rhododendrons. There's huge tissue culture labs and companies that do nothing but rhododendrons. So hardwood so cool. shrubs, um, you know, they'll do uh, roses. You know, the, oh, there's there, sometimes there's there's uh, there's tissue culture for roses. A lot of times, if people want to, the, the reason you do tissue culture uh, is almost the same reason you do uh, stem cuttings, um, uh, because you want to have a clone, a specific uh, trait of a plant. You want to clone that. You want to repeat it many, 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 many times over. Okay. And doing tissue culture. It can be a little expensive for companies to do, but the amount of space it takes to produce hmm. thousands of plants is 
tiny in comparison to taking thousands of cuttings. So that's one reason why you'd want to do tissue culture. That's so interesting. So, yeah. so if you want like a specific certain color that you're growing of your petunia, let's say, yep. I mean, this, this would ensure you're getting the same plant. Yep, exactly. Because you're cloning it. Well, and, and it can get even more intricate too. Like it has the specific flower you want and the color of flower, the shape of the flower, the leaves, you know, the color of the leaves, if there's variegation. The, oh, the length of the yeah. stem, how big the plant actually gets. When you take a tissue culture, when, when you do plants by tissue culture, you're literally cloning all those characteristics of that plant, how fast it grows, how much water it needs, how much sun it needs. You're cloning all of that into a new plant over and over That's and over cool. again. At some point you can do that. And so it's just, it's really interesting. And there's whole, you know, there's whole, uh, uh, what do you call it? University um, uh, classes. Uh, on this, they have some universities have actually they have specializations in their horticulture and, and plant programs for specifically tissue culture, and so it can get super intricate. It's super crazy awesome to to do, and it takes you got to have steady hands, <laughs> and you got to make sure you mask up. But it's so fun, and it brings back a lot of memories for me because I did a lot of it back in in school. Um, and I did a lot of research on it. So it was fun. Anyway, so I'm gonna tissue pop, culture. Ooh. Yeah, I think that's neat. I'm going to pop something in the oh, chat here, you guys. Cool. I found a kit. Now, we haven't fully oh, vetted this, so but cool. here's just an example of maybe like what oh, a kit would look God. like. I know Andrea said, this is so cool. I've never heard it or thought about this. So oh, yeah. I want to research this a little bit more. And wouldn't this be a fun kind of winter project? You know? Oh, totally. Right? Yeah. A lot of us were saying, you know, they're, Heck yeah. they want to keep busy in the winter. So they... They spritz their, you know, plant cuttings oh, or take yeah. care of things. I know that that was really fun for us last year it too was. during the colder months. So tissue culture. Yeah, yeah. You might have to get a kit and try it out. I know. Yeah, that'd be fun. Interesting. So and there's books on it too. So if I mean if you want to know the basics on tissue culture, you can find books on that. If you want to get deep into tissue culture itself, there's whole books on that too, like getting down to cell structure and which uh, which actual tissue to take on specific plants at what time of year and and the whole protocol to take those uh those samples those tissues and then all the protocols to get it into the clean environment to then propagate i mean it it can get really really detailed but it's so fun yeah anyway so i know we want to move on so moving on um our next one no that's really <laughs> no, we got excited okay so the next one excites me as well and unfortunately we can't do it right now it needs to happen in the spring when things are just starting to grow but grafting yep. so some of you may have heard of this but maybe you never thought you could try it at home i know this is something we've been wanting to try oh, with yeah. some of our cherry trees totally yeah so guys the reason you want to graft um is because you want to take uh, a specific plant um uh, you want to take the top of that plant or a specific characteristic of a plant and you want to duplicate it but you want to make it better that's so fun and you want to make it either more uh, disease resistant you want to make sure you want to make it so it has more vigorous growth um you want to you want to give a fruit a different taste you can actually grafting can actually change the taste of fruits when you graft so and basically what happens is you're taking a top piece and a bottom piece and you're literally splicing them together. That is, and it's so cool because you're matching tissues of plants, their specific tissues together, their translocation tissues, their xylem and phloem, and you're you're basically grafting those together to help them grow and fuse to then produce a whole new part of a plant or a whole new plant itself. And so what you have is is you have the top portion and that's called the scion, and you have the bottom portion which is called the stock. And so a lot of this, a lot of grafting happens for um, for disease resistance and vigorous growth, especially for roses. It happens for fruit trees, especially cherries. Uh, it can happen for pears, apples, almost anything. And so what a lot of people have done is they've actually had like a fruit tree, like a, let's say a cherry tree. We have a cherry tree. So what we can do is we can actually take um, that cherry tree. We could take another flowering or not flowering, another fruit bearing cherry tree, scion, and graft it to a piece of our existing tree. And it could be like, our tree right now is a red uh, cherry tree. Um, I can't remember what the specific type is, but it has red fruit. We could get a yellow uh, cherry or a white cherry type of tree, graft that on, and then we could get a whole part of the tree that has nothing but those yellow or white cherries. And it could definitely influence grafting it to the original cherry tree. That new part of the cherry tree could have a completely different taste so cool. than what it's known for. So, I mean, 
it can get crazy awesome and super interesting to do all this. We've been wanting to try so. that because, yeah, we do have the two cherry trees. And we're, we're really afraid we've lost our beautiful, very, very old Fuji tree, yeah. which is a flowering uh, cherry. I'm looking and at it right now. It's not It's not good. looking too good. It's and had disease on it a lot for a yeah. while. And so, oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's really but. sad. So we were thinking, oh, maybe we can kind of <laughs> graft that together with our other cherry tree or yeah. maybe a different flowering tree. Yeah. But I don't know. We might have missed our window on that. But that's something that you'd want to do in the late winter and early spring. Yeah, and the reason for that is, is because the plants are starting to wake up in the in the late winter and early spring. The juices are flowing, right? The, all the energy is coming out of those roots. It's starting to flow back up into the plant from its dormancy. And it's, it's starting to think, I'm going to grow. I'm going to get vigorous. I'm going to flower. I'm going to leap. So when it starts doing that, that's the best time to make your graft because that's when that new scion wood that you're going to put on that on that stock on the on the existing plant is going to have its best chance of literally fusing um, and growing and actually being successful. That's so cool. So that's really cool. Yep. So grafting, you grafting. Guys. So that might be another fun one to research. Totally. And you can get ready for that for next spring. Mm -hmm. So next we have layering, layering. which um, we're going to talk a little bit more detail about that because we have. One example of something you could do, which it's really maybe not the right time to plant it, but at least we can get you thinking about it maybe. So there's different types of layering. The ones that we were going to talk about are just kind of a regular layering or might be called simple layering. Is that right? Yep, simple layering. Or an air layering. Yep, so simple layering, guys, is basically when you have, and we have some uh, some examples up here, so uh, rhododendrons, azaleas, verbena, the yeah. annual verbena, um, even mint, and then strawberries and ajuga. But like rhododendrons, like the shrubs, the hard hardwood shrubs, either evergreen or uh, deciduous, this happens when they have a lot of limbs coming out. It's new growth. It's vigorous. It might be a year or two old. It gets some weight on it, and then it comes down, and it bows down, and it actually touches the ground or gets, gets the ground, and it gets covered with leaves or other soil. These plants up here that we've given, um, like the rhododendrons, azaleas, um, and a, there's a lot of other plants that do this. They are actually kind of genetically programmed to make a new plant in that covered area of the soil of that stem that's covered. They will literally, they're programmed with what's called adventitious shoots and or adventitious roots. And what they will do under those conditions is produce new roots from that stem under those conditions to produce a whole new plant. So cool. And this is called layering. That's really cool. Maybe if we can make the screen bigger, we oh, can sure. show them. Oh, sure, sure, good idea. So now that's, that, that's so that's the hardwood example of it. But oh. now what we have is we've got so ajuga and strawberries. Yeah. They do a type of layering, which is they produce these long stems like this. So here's the big here's the big plant on the uh, on the strawberry. It's uh, I dug it up this morning. You can see that root system looks really good right there. It's got this bud right here. It's continuous thing to grow. And it grows from a rosette. This is one of our, um, what is it? This is our native strawberry here yeah. in Washington State. One of them, anyway. Um, and so, uh, so what it's done is, is it's it's gotten healthy. It's got really good roots. It's actually sent out what what's called these runners. And these are just really long stems, and they've got buds on them. Um, but what it's done over it, and it goes over the soil. It sends these out. These literally grow over the soil into new positions. And there's a bud at the end of these, and they actually have new plants that start to grow in the same form that this does. And it, w right now what's going on is it sends these out over the summer, the spring and summer, actually, you know, after it matures enough. And it, it helps these new plants grow and stabilize and get big enough to where they will start to grow roots underneath here, right where I'm pointing right there with my finger, and they'll produce a whole new plant and this will root and this will be self-sustaining once those roots come out. Right now, it's not doing that. And so this is a really good example of layering uh, happening with these runners, but um, you don't want to cut these off right now because and make these whole new plants by themselves because there's no roots. They're starting to grow the little roots, and you can't really see it there, but there's little nubs right there on the ends. You see those? Yeah, kind of. Some, yeah. Something, a little something coming out of the, yeah. the nub there. So they're starting to grow those roots, but it's not there yet. And so what you want to do in this situation with um, with these strawberries and with the juga, leave these be, let them sit. They're going to grow. For, right now, they're going to start growing those roots through into the fall, through the winter. And then in the springtime, 
you can go back and check them. They should have new roots growing on them and then they will be able to self-sustain and become plants all by themselves. You can then cut this if you want, this runner off right here on this plant, take this plant and transplant it and put it somewhere else, whether it's somewhere else in your garden, in a bed or in a container. Mm. So anyway, so- That's a fun way to, um, it's a, to spread those plants around your yard. And then also too, along, along these stems, these runners, there's actually buds at different intervals here. And if these buds get uh, covered, they also will sprout shoots. They'll, they'll sprout a new plant, but it just needs the right conditions to do that. But as these sit right now, this is over the soil. This plunks down into on top of the soil and it's starting to grow. It wants to grow new roots. And it'll root and just yeah, develop. Yep. So that's, that's, so cool. that's layering. That's a type of layering. A type of layering. Yep. Yeah. So anyway. There's a, I know. If, I mean, if, if you have strawberry, you know <clears> if it's in the ground. It's like ours, it just spreads everywhere. And same mm -hmm. with the juga. It's mm -hmm. really fun to watch that grow. Mint. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Mental. Mental do that too. So yeah. So guys, um, the, the the key here is is this isn't a way to propagate plants right now in the fall or coming up in the fall. It's a spring type of um, it's a spring type of propagation where you can cut and remove those new plants and then that's your propagation layering to place them in a new spot. Yeah, that makes sense. So okay. So something to think about store for later. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But then there's air layering too, where we have um, you have. You kind of explained that, right? The air layering just a little bit. Have you talked about uh, that? No, I, we haven't talked about that yet. So air layering is a little bit different where um, a plant is pre-programmed to actually grow roots under certain conditions, but it's up in the air yeah, this time. Yeah, that's so cool. It's not down on the ground. It's not con not connected to the ground at all. And we've got some examples here for plants that air layer themselves, and it's ficus plants, lime trees, mahonia, rubber trees. Uh, Croton, which is an indoor plant, Diffenbachia, which is another indoor plant, but also camellia plants and trees like shrubs and trees, holly, um, and even magnolias. There's more that'll do it. So a lot of these plants, they're either tropical, yeah. subtropical, or just maybe even a Mediterranean type of climate like what we have. And what you can do is, is those plants, you have a, um, what you'll do is you'll have a, maybe a one, uh, may, well, maybe like a, even a, a one to three year old stem coming off or a branch coming off, what you do is you uh, make some cuts on it, expose some of the uh, translocation tissue, the, the phloem, and what you'll do is, is you'll uh, put that on there. Some of these need some uh, growth, uh, plant growth regulator for rooting, some don't. So it's kind of plant specific. But what you do is, is you make those cuts, expose that tissue, wrap it and put moist soil up around it, whether it's uh, just peat moss or even, um, even just like potting soil. You can try that too. Moisten it, put it up around it, saran wrap it, and um, <laughs> make sure that you can either wrap um, uh, something around that to give it that dark, that darkness, because roots like the dark. Um, and what you'll do is, is it's up in the air, you've, you've got the soil around the stem uh, up in the air, it can produce roots. So that's, that's, cool. that's air layering Very cool. in a nutshell. So. so our last way of how to make more plants, that was really good. I know he knows a lot, right, you guys? Um, dividing. dividing, that's something we can do right now. And a lot of you probably are <laughs> already thinking about looking around your plant or looking around your garden and thinking like, oh, I wanna, you know, I need to divide that. I need to divide that. Or certain plants need to be divided every couple years. Some mm -hmm. are a little bit more like five or every five or six years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe like your cone flowers, things like that. Yep, yep. You wanna make sure, a lot of times you wanna make sure they're, they have um, they've grown enough in your garden so they have that maturity so when you do divide yeah. them and cut them both both pieces that you that you now have or more pieces uh, in some cases they will survive with enough of a crown or in some cases um, a bulb piece because um, if, if you're not like let's say coneflower mm. um, or no shasta daisy if you have a new shasta daisy in the ground and you just planted it last year and it hasn't grown very much, you don't have much of a crown on it, like maybe it's like that big, you don't wanna divide that yet because it's not gonna sustain itself. Either either piece won't sustain itself. So you wanna make sure it's at least two to three years old before you actually, or actually maybe three to four years old before you um, do the division. That makes sense. Make you want sure that, it's healthy and big enough. That maturity that, of that crown. Yeah. So anyway. There's a lot of things, right, that you can, you could maybe divide this fall. Like we're going to do hostas. We definitely need to divide our hostas and yep. probably Shasta daisies again. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Or just transplant them in general. Fall's a good oh, time to do this, guys. This yeah, is. This is great the, for fall. Yeah. Dividing, uh, dividing in the fall is a must. 
um, if you're going to divide any plant, most plants. Now, some plants need to are, are actually divide better in the spring, and one of those is dianthus. Ooh. So that's that's a different plant to divide uh, another time. That's a really but, good point. <clears throat> we've done we've done that before, and that was fun. Mm -hmm. And we made like three new plants out of it, mm -hmm. out of one plant. I know this uh, this fall we want to divide our sedums. Oh yeah, that would be great. So yeah, so that'll be cool. Sedums are such a cool plant. You can do so many things. You can collect their mm -hmm. seeds. You can take cuttings. You can divide them. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of different... A lot of options. A lot of options, yeah. I know. So, That's one we definitely want more of. Yeah. yeah, guys. So, yeah, so this this is pretty much all we got for you for how to make more plants, uh, especially this fall. We've, we've called those out here, the stem cuttings, uh, planting seeds, and then also dividing for this fall. But all these other ones, you know, you can do in the spring or even in the summer. There's a lot of different things going on here. So we hope we've piqued your interest. I know. And uh, hopefully you'll... You'll, you'll take one of these or maybe all of them and run with them and try them all out. Just kind of, yeah, just an overview of lots of options out of others that are out there, right? Yep, yep, yep. But totally. these are the main, probably some of the main ones. Yep, so awesome, you guys. Woohoo! So let us know. I know we gave you a lot of information and, <laughs> yeah, so if you have questions about any specific things that we went through, um, yeah, let us know, please. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, guys. That was fun. Brought back a lot of memories. Yeah, I bet. I know. We did a lot of this in grad school. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So let's change the topic here. Um, I know, unfortunately, we have a really fun uh, photo to show you from one of our audience members' <clears throat> gardens. But she had to leave um, a oh, little while ago yeah, to go to show some houses because she's a real estate Oh, lady. yeah. Cool. So yeah. Kim Matlock, thank you for sending us some photos. Yeah. Here's a really beautiful collage she put together that she wanted to show everybody. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. I know. It's really pretty. So it's always fun to see everybody's gardens okay. and what kind of projects you know you've been working on or different container arrangements and things like that. So don't forget you can always send us your photos, Sean and Allison at spokengarden.com, or just tag us on social media, which is what some of you do as well. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah, guys. So here's Kim's beautiful garden, and so look at everything she's doing. She's I know, got potted lots plants. Of <clears throat> it looks like in that center top row. Um, she's got a whole bunch of dahlias going on there and some other oh, flowering plants. That is so cool. Look at that. And I know she was really excited on the bottom left there, her row of zinnias, which she had never oh. grown from seed before until oh, either wow. last year or this year. I forget. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she's really excited about those and those look like those are really beautiful. She's doing a great job. Yeah. Wow. And, and then also, um, center lower, uh, lower row there. I love that container. I really like that Geraniums too. and is that pothos? That's like a, either or, that or, or a sweet that potato a, vine, maybe but a sweet it's kind of a vine? larger yeah. one. Beautiful. That's fun. Yeah. Look, looks really good. And then her container plants there. And Some cut flowers maybe am mm -hmm. I seeing there too? So mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yay. Great job, Kim. Really wow. beautiful, Kim. Awesome. So thank you again for sending that mm -hmm. to us and, thank um, you. yeah, send That's us your your photos too if you want to get them featured on the show well totally. we love to show off your gardens yeah totally guys yeah we want to see what you're doing out there yeah so, so i think we have yeah. a little slide of a couple things growing in our yard um yeah. there's always so much during the summer right it's hard to pick just like we kind of try to narrow it down to just a few things but there we go yeah there's so, so much to oh, pick from and yeah. i'm sure it's the same in your yard too. yeah that that top row there on the left our big leaf hydrangea oh that's looking I know, and so I'm sorry, beautiful we didn't uh, save all the info <clears throat> like specific name of mm -hmm. that one but no that's out in our front yard and it's doing really well it's getting big it's getting very big yeah um the middle uh middle top row cherry brandy oh. rebecca oh that's so beautiful that was our, our first backyard. time growing oh. that and you know what guys we grew that using the winter jug method um which we probably if you've watched that video you saw us plant those and then we did an mm -hmm. update so um th those really got strong and healthy and that's just one flower but there's a bunch yeah they're really flourishing out i really the like those yep and then, of course, Lavender Perfection Dahlia. Oh, my gosh. Now we look at that. I know. Look at that. Wow. I think that's the name, right? Because it came in a mix of bulbs, and we're pretty <laughs> sure. They didn't label the individual bulbs, so no. we had to kind of match it to well, pictures on Eden Brothers. You know, the, the mixes keep it interesting. They do, because then you're like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's yep. a surprise. You never know what you're going to get. You never know. So, yeah, that lower uh, left-hand corner there. Oh, Desert sunset mix zinnia. Probably Beautiful. one of my favorite zinnia yep, me too. seed mixes that we've ever me grown. Me too. It's so profuse. They it's they grow beautiful. so well in our gardens. So, yeah. And then uh, the lower uh, middle there, black eyed Susan vine. Those are doing great. Those are great. You yep, know, and I'm really sorry well. we didn't get the name for that. That we do have that available if you want to find out. But it's a beautiful orange black eyed Susan. Yeah. And then that lower uh, right hand corner, supreme cantaloupe echinacea. Yay. That cone flower. It's so beautiful. It's almost like 
it, it looks so unique from the cone flowers we've had in the past. It's got this floofy center cone flower piece there that has those petals and that color. And then it's actually got the petals coming out from that below that and it's just so it's unique. gorgeous i don't even oh. think that picture does it justice it's more of a peach color i don't know it's a little bit lighter in that light that um, the photo was taken in so mm -hmm. it's gorgeous it was the yeah. one that we were looking for if you guys remember and we finally found it and got it planted so mm -hmm. it's a very small immature plant right now but it has like it's gotten very healthy it's really grown well so far yeah in looks, the last five months great. or so yep that's up in our terrace area we just planted that early in the summer so yeah, awesome. Hey, I know. So, yeah, you guys. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, you guys, um, what do you think? Um, we got we talked about all of the mm -hmm. different ways of um, creating new plants. There's so many different fun ways. Yeah, and so thanks many again. Options. Thanks again, Graham Thomas, for for suggesting this. This has been really fun for us to present that to was... you guys. So, yeah. Well, and I feel like each of those options, all of the six that we showed you, could each be their own episode. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, there's just Definitely. so much more information to go oh, yeah. into. And it's fun to think about, too, because all of those options, they're all doable. You can do all of them. We can do all of them. It's not, it's not that hard once you, get into, uh, once you get into some of the specifics and just uh, learn it a couple times and do, go through the process a couple times. You can do this. It's f so much fun. And um, yeah, I, I can't wait to actually hear if any of you guys out there actually try these and what your success is, what you learned, you know, uh, yeah, anything like that. It's be so cool. So, well, and I'm yeah. wondering now, and maybe you are, you are too, but like, <coughs> is there a plant propagation method we introduced to you today that either you want to try now that you've mm -hmm. never tried totally. before Good or question. something you're excited to learn more about? Yep. Drop, drop that in the chat and let us know. Yeah, totally, you guys. Love to and know. We'll share that with everybody before we head out here. And, and I wanted to see, I can't see it from here, um, but the poll. Oh, let's check in on our poll. Yeah, call. totally. So the question again was, would you consider yourself a little bit burnt out at this point in the summer, kind of like, or at this point in the season? And where we're at, 29% um, of you said yes, and 71% said no. Wow, that's great, you guys. So mostly, no, you're not burnt out. You're ready to go still. That's good. It's easy to get burnt out too, because you know we want to have beautiful gardens. We want to take on all these projects and just have everything flourishing and spend so much time out there. But if we do too much of that, um, over and above everything else we got going on in our lives, yeah, it's easy to get burnt out. It really it is. It really is. It's just like, oh, it's the garden. Uh, I'll get it tomorrow, or uh, it's not top priority right now. Sometimes you just need a little <laughs> bit of the breather, but then yep. you're ready to go again. Yep, totally. So a lot of you are saying um, thank you, and um, they're happy, you know that. We were all here today together. And oh yeah, us too. Totally, yeah. you guys. Right. So we yeah. are kind of at the end here. So I think so. we're next week. We have um, Rhonda Testa. Here. Rhonda is the winner of next week's and the very last week of August um, audience challenge. Yep. So really fun topic coming up next week, you guys. How to support pollinators into the fall and winter. It's gonna be so great, you guys. That's gonna be a wait. lot of fun to talk about. Yep. So like, what are we thinking? Maybe specific plants and flowers you can either add now or. Mm -hmm other things you can do to kind of help and support yeah, them. Yeah, over and above the flowers, over and above uh, giving that, providing that that pollen and nectar, what else can you do in the fall and winter? And there's a lot you can do. No, I'm excited to hear to talk more about yep. that and learn more. Me too, me too. That's going to be really so, fun. It's going to be awesome, you guys. And you can see a couple other shows coming up through September. We don't really have the topics totally figured out yet, so we didn't want to advertise that quite yet. Yeah. But we do have our one year anniversary live. It's not technically on September 11th. It's actually on the 9th, but that'll be the closest show. Yep, that, that'll, that's a Saturday. Yeah. So, yep, yep. But yeah, fun, you guys. Yeah, Yay. that's right. When we first started this, we actually, we actually started it on a Wednesday. I think we were airing on Wednesday nights. Yeah, it was Wednesday nights, we kind you of guys. Were just, we were in the evening. Yeah. It's like 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening. And all of our shows we filmed outside because we wanted to be outside. And then we realized it was hard to control the sound and, you know, all it's, the... It's gardening. you got to be outside in the garden. I know. We want to be outside, but this is easier to control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. sometime we'll be outside again. We'll maybe, try it. Maybe that episode maybe we that will episode be outside. We, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to talk <laughs> about that again. But Yeah. Our very first show ever, we made a fall container on oh, our yeah. live, and we were thinking it'd be really fun to kind of recreate that and make a new fall container, mm -hmm. kind of a one-year anniversary container or something mm -hmm. fun like yeah, that. It'd be fun. So, so we'll have to talk more about that. Yeah, but Definitely. So as yep. always, you guys, we're so thankful that you're here. I know a lot of you have to go. We've been keeping you here long enough. I know. Enough. We're almost 30 minutes over. I know. Wow. A lot of you are heading out into the garden right now, so yay. Have fun out there, you guys. Um, 
Yeah, I think this is this yep. was a really fun show today, it and was. we're just so thankful that you're all here. Yeah, thanks you guys for being here. Thanks for all your awesome questions, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we can't wait to see you next week. I know. So, yay! Yep. So, guys, I guess for now, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see, see you ya, out there. See you next time. Yep, I know. See you next we'll time. be back next Saturday, and watch for our videos, other videos coming up this week. Yep. So take care until then. Bye, you guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>